So last night when it launched, I tried some of Star Wars Jedi Survivor on the PlayStation 5. And while it didn't run great, it ran well enough that I think you could play through the game and have a pretty good time. However, I have heard from multiple sources who have played through the entire game at this point that the PC version of the game is an utter, complete dumpster fire. So I figured why not buy the game and try it. As always, like the video if you enjoy it. Subscribe if you want to see me waste my money buying games that are broken and trying them on my 4090 so that you don't have to. Right off the bat, just to let you know, we are running this at 3440 by 1440p. This is ultra wide, so we're cranking it there. Everything else is epic. Field of view is set to wider. We have VSync turned on, brightness set properly, film grain, motion blur, all of that stuff. And we also have ray tracing enabled as well. It should be noted there is no DLSS support on launch day. Maybe they'll add that later. There's only AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution, which while better than nothing is not anywhere near as good as DLSS in my humble opinion and in my experience. But you know what? We're gonna try this and see what we're dealing with. As you can see in the top left right now, GPU's at about 75%, frame rate's locked at about 135 about. So let's see if that gets any worse as we go. We're gonna start a new journey. I'm gonna play on Jedi Grandmaster and we'll just leave all of that default and start new journey. And let's see how this runs. Ooh, already a little stuttery. It's okay, happens to the best of us. Looks sharp. Little texture pop in, okay. Um, looks fine, it's just getting started. You know what, every game needs a little warm up. I'll give it to them. It looks good. The PlayStation 5 version looked pretty good too, but the performance mode drops the resolution like crazy. Like it's, it's pretty rough when you're playing on performance mode, especially if you have a bigger TV or screen that you're looking at. Uh, but so far, this all looks really, really sharp. Frames are pretty solid. And while I'm a little weirded out, VRAM's not as high as I was expecting. People were saying this is a VRAM hog. It doesn't really seem to be, but you know what? It, it looks pretty good. Let's keep going through the game and see if we can get this to break. I will say, I think there is some shader compilation stuff going on. It's weirdly stuttery every time we turn a corner. Might not be shaders. There's the ray tracing reflections right there. Uh, it might just be loading data in. There was a shader compilation thing that happened when we booted up. But even there, you see on the tubes, that weird aliasing, I tried to walk backwards, that didn't work. I think that's the AMD FSR2 rearing its ugly head if i go in here and i turn off fsr and we just run it natively you can see frames drop a good amount but we don't have that weird artifacting and aliasing so i'll count it as a win i am seeing a lot of stuttering micro stutter weird things popping in texture pop in a lot of little weirdness here and there um but when I was playing on PS5, up until this point, it was running pretty well. And then all hell let loose once things started getting a little more elaborate. And I'm guessing it's going to be the same case this time around. And already drops into the 40s is a little rough. Now, before anybody says that, I know that there was some frustration in my Last of Us Part 1 on PC video because I just tested on, on the 4090 and then I was like, yeah, it doesn't run horribly, but it's not the worst thing ever. So this time around, I'm also going to be testing this game on my gaming laptop that's behind me. This thing is uh, a pretty run of the mill gaming laptop. It runs uh, with a 3070, which is still technically above mid tier hardware, but it should give us a good indicator of what more average hardware is capable of doing with this game compared to this 4090, which of course is very, very heavy duty. Because as always, I want to try and test this stuff and see what it's like on most people's hardware because I mean, this is fun, this is interesting, but most people are not running this game on crazy high hardware. So I wanna see what it runs like for like the best case scenario and then also in a less than best case scenario on more mid-tier hardware okay this is interesting it drops into the 30s 
in cutscenes like this. It went from 60 and 70 frames during gameplay, which already wasn't great, and it plummets to half during some cutscenes like this one. That's wild, man. I don't know why it would do that. Somebody who's tech savvy or digital foundry or somebody should explain it because that's bizarre. And we're not even like maxed out. The GPU is at 40%. I don't know, is it capped? No, because it's up in the 40s. I don't know what's happening. This is bizarre. This is really weird. Okay, this next sequence was pretty tough on the PlayStation 5. It stuttered a good amount. So let's see how this holds mind. up on, the, on the 4090. Yeah. It's holding at 50, Look out! which ain't Look out! terrible. Like that, that'll work. Should be way better on a 4090, but yes, I, it's playable. It's kind of bad when that's what you have to say. It's not totally broken. <laughs> okay, this moment right here, there was a big frame drop on PS5 in performance mode. Jedi Knight, right up here in a second when uh there's a little separation that happens i wonder if it's gonna happen here too the whole boss fight was pretty much locked in at 70 ish frames which again isn't like as good as you would hope for but it's playable but again if you have to spend five grand on a pc to get the game playable like Come on, <laughs> like I think we're beginning a little bit silly. I think we're being a little silly. It's time to set you free. It's time to set you free. Is it gonna drop? Drop them frames. No. Wow. Okay. That part ran a little better than the PlayStation version. Maybe I just got unlucky on PS5. But in, on PS5, that little charge she did okay. dropped the whole thing down to like 15 frames. Okay, now here we go into the second planet. We're, so good. We're gonna see if this suffers from performance issues as well. In general, I don't think it's running great. And I mean, you would hope that it would at least be playable on the most expensive hardware on the market, like at the very least. And right after this, we're going to boot it up on the gaming laptop and see how this goes on more mid-tier hardware as well. Right off the beat, like it's actually running better on, than buddy. the first planet. Long way to go. Um, but you know what? Time will tell, especially once we get into some of the open areas where the game tends to get pushed to its limits. There is a little stutter. Hello. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello, goodbye. <laughs> oh, that's tremendous. So, glory in combat. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say what I'm thinking, okay? I'm gonna say what I'm thinking. For shame, right? Oh, as I die. Honestly, it's playable on a five thousand dollar PC. It drops down to the thirty frame rate range in cutscenes, which is amazing to me it should run far far better than that at this level of hardware but frankly it's it's playable that being said a game should be a hell of a lot more than playable on a piece of hardware like this but this isn't that helpful for most people like i said because most people are going to be playing this game on what would be considered average or typical hardware and so what I want to do next is we're going to swap over to some footage captured on the gaming laptop and we're going to see what that's like. And maybe it'll be way better. Maybe it'll be way worse. We're going to find out real quick. Okay. So I just put in another good chunk of time into the game, but this time on the gaming laptop behind me, which runs a 3070 mobile variant because of course it's in a laptop. So it's not as powerful as a 3070, but a little bit less so much closer to a mid-tier graphics card and mid-tier gaming setup than something like this pc right here and running at 1080p on medium or low settings this thing struggles to maintain 30 fps often dropping down into the 20s sometimes even lower and there are some times where you're just going to be struck in awe of how terrible the game looks when you drop it down to these settings. It just can't handle it. And I think a lot of it is that AMD FSR 2, it's just not very good at maintaining sharpness when it's upscaling. Like if we look at a couple of freeze frames here, let me just show you what this one looks like. Look at this level of detail, <laughs> like all detail in Cal disappears. 
And this is true whenever there's any movement on screen. I mean, anytime there's movement, you will completely lose all detail on anything because it's struggling to upscale and make it look decent. I mean, there's, there is not a sharp edge in this entire frame. And I know what you might be thinking. Oh, Luke, that scene is when there's lots of movement. That's not fair. Well, if we look at something like this, you can see in this freeze frame of a cutscene, there's very, very little detail in any of their faces. Because again, in order to get this thing running above 30 FPS on a 3070, you have to run this thing at bare bottom, lowest of the low settings. And you also have to run AMD FSR auto AI upscaling. And so you just run into this situation where the quality is set super low and then also the upscaling is really crappy. And so it just makes everything look terrible. I mean, again, there's no detail here. It's just horrifying. Like her teeth are made up of five pixels in total. It's amazing. And if you're not seeing this, maybe you're on your phone, try zooming in, set the video quality to 4K 60, which is what we record this in, and just zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm seeing when this thing is blown up on a full screen in front of you and you'll get it. I mean, this is, this is painful. For a 2023 release that otherwise looks pretty good, it's just unbelievable that it casually runs like this at times. Okay, at times is maybe a little bit, um, generous because it always looks like this. I mean, the, the clip you're seeing right now runs at about 20 to 25 FPS while just exploring this level. And the bummer is that this happens right about two hours and 10 minutes into the game. You know, when Steam's refund policy expires two hours into the game. <laughs> So right as you'll run into this, presumably right as the performance really tanks is precisely when you can no longer return the game. That is maybe a coincidence, but it might also uh, be very, very intentional. So I have a few questions. For one, why didn't the press make a bigger deal of this? This seems like a huge problem and it's surprising that there weren't more penalizations towards this game with all of this. I mean, even PC Gamer, I believe, gave it an eight out of 10 while mentioning that it's basically unplayable. Yup, no joke, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, eight out of 10, an 80, even though they describe very openly that this thing often drops as low, cutscenes often plummet to 15 to 20 FPS, cut off or overlapping dialogue because the timelines don't work or sync up. I haven't run into that, but apparently it's a common issue and it usually doesn't recover until the player regains control. That is ridiculous. And frankly, I don't know how a game gets an eight out of 10 score while having problems this severe. Maybe my standards are just different. Maybe I just grade games differently. But in my mind, if you're talking about a game that they're charging you 70 bucks for, and it drops down to 15 frames on a 4090 or a 3080 or whatever these guys were playing on, how do you give that a great rating? Like, it's amazing. Give it a, a two out of 10, give it a four out of 10 or something, and then go back and re-review it or rescore it after it's fixed. But on launch day, when people look at PC Gamer and they see, oh, they give it an 80. Okay, so it's pretty good. They buy the game and then they run into these problems right as the refund timer runs out. That's horrifying. It's irresponsible and it, it's ridiculous. Now, why they might have done this is for one, they might just be honestly grading how the game is. As a game, if you ignore technical problems, it probably is an 8 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10. I think you should probably penalize it for performance issues because that's part of the game. But setting that aside, if they were just trying to score the game as its own thing in a vacuum, maybe that's how they land on that score. The other possibility is that some journalists and reviewers honestly did not run into all of these problems that we general consumers are running into now on launch day. And as you saw, that's probably because they are running very high end hardware, kind of like my PC, because they do this for a living as well. They can justify spending those thousands of dollars on a computer. And then they play through the game and they're like, yeah, it doesn't run great. I only get 70 frames, but you know what? It's playable and it's pretty good. And they'll forget about it pretty quickly. And then they'll do the review, hyping it up and being like, it's a good game. Doesn't run great, but it's pretty good. Totally ignoring the fact that when you're running on mid-tier hardware, it runs like 
absolute ass. And that's why I pulled out my gaming laptop because after I tried The Last of Us Part 1 on PC, using just my big beefy computer. I heard from a lot of you guys from Mutahar on some ordinary gamers that maybe it's worth testing it on more varied hardware on hardware. That's a little bit more, I would say in line with most people's setups. And as you can see, we go from like 60, 70 frames a second on the 4090 all the way down into the low twenties on low settings at 1080p when we play on mid-tier hardware. That's when you really get exposed to just how terrible this port is. So don't always buy it when you see journalists or YouTubers and people hyping up a game or saying, eh, the performance isn't that bad. It's overreactions based on Twitter and Reddit, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes it's simply because they haven't experienced it using hardware that's more in line with the average consumer. And that's a mistake I've made before myself. And it's the reason why I'm trying to remedy it by testing on other hardware so that we can experiment and see what most people are going to experience when they play the game. And all told, it's just a huge bummer because this game really is pretty good. It's actually really good at times, but it just goes to show you how a screwed up rushed game that is not polished and isn't refined can totally trip on its way out the gate and it can permanently harm that game's potential down the road. Like years from now, people are going to think, oh, Jedi Survivor. Oh yeah, it's the Star Wars game that launched totally broken. And that's what people remember, just like Callisto Protocol. And all anybody can talk about with Callisto Protocol right now is that it launched totally broken. There's a lot of other stuff to talk about the game. I also don't think it's tremendous even if it's running properly. But the point is that most people will only remember that game for its technical failings or Batman Arkham Knight on PC. All anybody really remembers is that the port was terrible and it ran like hot dog water. Same with Gotham Knights decent game, maybe a six or seven out of 10, sure, but a decent game. It works. You can have fun with it, but it launched totally broken. So that's all anybody will remember. It's so short-sighted of these big corporations to think that they can just rush something like this out or toss it out before it's fully done cooking and expect everything to just be totally fine. And that brings me to what is perhaps the most terrifying implication of all of this, which is that for all of us, we're saying, how are they getting away with this? How is this profitable? How do they do this and not see the blowback coming back to bite them? And the scary thing is that it might not really matter. And that's simply because there have been a handful of games that have launched totally disastrously broken, which still turn not just profits, but groundbreaking profits. They print money despite tons of upset gamers and boycotts and screams of criminal behavior. They still practically print money. Even Cyberpunk 2077, which was by all accounts, one of the biggest disasters of modern gaming. They sold 13 million copies within two weeks, 13 million copies. That's more copies than most games sell in a decade, even if they're very, very successful. That's ridiculous. But you know what? When we look at Cyberpunk, we look at it and we think, oh, well, you know, this is going to be a great example of how these companies need to polish before they release. But a lot of these big corporate bigwigs, they look at this and they say, oh, so it doesn't matter. We can launch a broken pile of garbage, sell it to the customers. They'll still buy it. Some of them will return it, sure, but a lot of them won't. We'll just get to keep the money and we don't have to delay the game and spend extra to polish it up. Cool. That's their takeaway. And it's because it doesn't matter. There is no real impact. There's no real punishment beyond some negative PR, but a lot of them don't even care. And frankly, some of these companies, I think, would rather rush the game out, get it out six months ahead of when it probably should be out, and then just spend a tenth of the cost of delaying the game on a PR firm or maybe some free DLC stuff that they can toss out to players to win them back. It sucks, but it's because there's a real lack of consequence. Uh, sometimes a game launches poorly and people tease it and then it is just a mess and the company goes under and it's 
funny and then also sad at the same time like with Forspoken where that studio famously shut down within just like a month or two after launch because it was received so terribly and the game was just a disaster but I would insist that wasn't because it was like a poorly optimized game although it was or just because it wasn't that pretty of a game although it was I think it's because there just never was any real hype or interest there but as we've seen in the gaming community whenever there's a title that has a lot of hype behind it a lot of the time even when it launches broken it still does well financially and in the case of star wars jedi survivor if you go over to the steam page right now and even if you just look at like the the achievements you unlock in the first two hours of the game you can see that only 0.2 percent of players have achieved this this thing like only 0.2 percent have gotten through the first hour or two that means a good number of them are either just not playing the game yet they're gonna wait until later in the weekend or maybe next week or they're just not booting it up until it's ready I, who knows and this is why i've said before and i'll say it again if you buy something like jedi survivor and it's a broken pile of garbage on your computer setup return it return it it costs ea money when you do that and that sends a message to them that you're not happy and that you're not going to put up with this if you buy the game it's broken and then you just leave it in your your library and you sit on it until it's patched they got what they wanted they got your money and now they can take whatever amount of time they need to to fix it if they ever do it all it's okay you can return it you can rebuy it in the future once it's fixed but until then, you shouldn't give them your money when they haven't earned it. And when they have a game like this that's in this condition, frankly, they haven't earned it. Even if the core game or the thing at the bottom of this pit of garbage is really, really good, they need to do the work to clear out the trash so that you can get to the thing that's actually valuable. But even so, I'm sure they're going to make a lot of money on Jedi Survivor, even with this terrible launch, even with the horrible quality they've put it out in. I don't know how it's legal to just casually release products and put stuff out that is not ready or that is uh, just outright broken for a huge chunk of customers. They keep doing it. So, <laughs> so I guess it is legal. It's fine. It's whatever. Who cares? <laughs> I would say like, oh, let's get mad and get like regulations put in place or something. But frankly, getting any government body involved in like video game releases sounds like a terrible idea. So I think it's up to us and we just have to vote with our wallets. When a game launches like this and is totally broken, don't buy it. And if you do buy it, return it, which is what I'm going to try to do on PC right now, even though, like I said, I'm at 2.1 hours. <sighs> Good news is a lot of the time Steam will still allow you to return even after you've run into those problems, uh, especially with games they're receiving a flood of return requests for. So I'm going to try and we're going to find out. I uh, will give a little update here if I do get the return to go through by the time this video goes up. And if I don't, then I guess we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> But you know what? That's going to do it for me. Thank you for watching. Again, like the video if you enjoyed it. Share it with a friend if they're thinking of getting this game on PC. And subscribe for more content coming at you quickly in the future. But with that, I love you all. Peace out. See you in the next one. Hugs and kisses. Bye-bye.